What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this realistic fire effect inside of After Effects. All right, so the first thing that we want to go ahead and do is 3D track our footage here. So what I'm going to do is right click on this clip, go to track and stabilize and hit track camera. And now this might take a while, but you just want to wait until the 3D camera is totally done tracking. And once it's done, you should see some points pop up on the screen. All right, so the 3D camera just got finished tracking. And if you didn't see any points pop up after tracking was done, you just want to make sure that this little thing right here is toggled on and is highlighted blue. And I don't know why it just gets toggled off sometimes, but we're not going to be using the 3D camera tracker right now. So we're just going to do duplicate this clip and delete the 3d camera tracker on this top layer we actually want to go ahead and rotoscope out this car here so go up to the rotor brush and just rotoscope out your car all right so i just finished rotoscoping so i'm just going to go ahead and hit freeze here and freeze on my rotor brush frames and then once that's done we can just close over that layer so we're back in our main composition and now this is the fun part where we get to start adding fire and stuff to the ground and kind of just customizing it to whatever you guys want now before i go ahead and start adding the fire to my video i just want to go ahead and say that i do have a link in the description where you can go ahead and download the same overlays that I'm using for this video. So there's going to be a couple different fire overlays that you can use and kind of follow along while I'm doing this. So once you have this downloaded, what you want to go ahead and do is go to this 3D camera tracker and let's just find some points that look pretty good and attract well. Um, let's just use some down here. And I'm just going to select a few of these and right click on it and hit create null in camera. I'm just gonna drag on one of these fire overlays here. And what you wanna do is parent that to the null object here. And then you wanna toggle on this 3D object. So now you can see it's 3D tracked, but obviously you don't want it to be flat on the ground like that. So what we're gonna do is hit R on our keyboard on that fire, just rotate it so that it looks like it's actually on the ground standing up. And we can move this around here using these little arrows and stuff. So that's looking a lot better. So now you can see the fire is 3D tracked in our video, but we have this black footage still. So we wanna go to mode and then select screen. So now that's gone and we just have the fire there. And you can scale this up. You can hit S on your keyboard and mess with the scale, move that around, whatever. And there we go. Now we have fire in our scene. So basically what you want to do is just keep repeating that process all around your footage here so that you get kind of like the effect that I had in the intro there where there's fire basically everywhere. Um, and the reason why I rotoscoped out the car is so we can put fire behind the car. So I'll just show that as an example really quick. I plan to place the fire pretty far behind the car here. So I'm going to go back to the 3d camera tracker and let's find a point that's like in the distance over here in this grass let's use like this right here and let's create another null and if you want you could be renaming these nulls to be more organized but <laughs> i'm too lazy to do that so i'm just going to remember that this pink null right here is our background and then this green one is our foreground so whenever i'm placing fire in the background i'm going to want to parent it to this one so let's bring on that same overlay again and this time we're going to parent it to this new null object and toggle on the 3d same thing we want to rotate it so that it is not flat like that and just make sure that we can actually see it and we can move it around now you can see it's 3d track to the background there and obviously we want to make that screen so we don't see any of the black there let's just scale this up let's make it pretty big like that and let's just move this down between these two clips so we have this background clip and the foreground of the car here so now when you see the camera move it goes behind the car and it just sells this effect it makes everything look a lot more like it's actually in the scene here i'm just going to duplicate this fire i'm going to hit Control d and let's just move this around some more we're going to scale us up like crazy so now you can see we have two fires in the background there and i'm just going to add a few more fire effects in the foreground here and maybe a couple more in the background but now that you guys kind of understand how to add the fire to your footage i'm not going to explain every single one so i'm just going to do a quick time lapse and see you guys once i'm done with that All right, so I just finished adding all the fire to the scene here. And now you can see I have a lot of fire in the background here and some in the foreground and it's all 3D tracked to the footage, but it's not totally looking too good right now. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is add some tint to the footage here. So on this background layer, I'm just gonna go to the effects and presets and search up tint and bring that onto our clip. Now you can see it made it black and white, but we're just gonna go to the black here and we're gonna go into the oranges and pick like a super dark orange, something right here. It's gonna look like pretty much brown, I guess. And for the white, you want it to be a bit brighter, so I want to pick something around here and obviously this looks terrible you don't want it to look like this um so what i'm going to go ahead and do is change this amount to tint to 60 percent and obviously you guys can mess with this it's going to depend 
uh, on your footage and what the lighting looks like and everything. So just mess with these and just see what looks good in your footage. But we're just gonna go ahead and copy this tint, control C and then control V, paste it on this other clip here. But the car is just looking a bit too dull here and I don't really like how that looks. I want it to be more bright. So I'm gonna go to the effects and presets and switch up levels and bring that onto our clip. And let's just mess with this histogram a bit. I kind of want more of the highlights to be showing. So let's just bring this over here and maybe just crush the blacks a bit like that. Maybe mess with the midtones here. All right, so there we go. That's what it looks like now. And that's what it was like before. So huge difference. I think that just looks a lot better. But the one thing that stands out to me is the color of the car here. I'm just going to go to the effects and presets once again and search up hue and saturation. Drag that onto your clip. Obviously, you don't have to do this, but let's just go to the science here and just make sure that this is applied above your tint there. And let's just mess with the cyan hue. So I like how this red looks right here. And that just looks a lot better already. Now let's just make an adjustment layer above all this footage. So I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and I'm just going to bring up a LUT, my color LUT, and I'm just going to use one of the LUTs that I've used in the past. But this is obviously way too strong, so I'm going to bring this down to like 20%, maybe like 30. All right, so that LUT just brings kind of all the colors together. Just find a LUT that you guys usually use or whatever and just apply it on top of your footage. Then what I'm going to do is search up Lumetri color and bring that onto here. And let's just bump up the exposure a bit to like 0.3, bump up the highlights. And I'm going to go to the vignette right here and just bring that all the way down. So now we have a very subtle vignette. And the reason why it's not that strong is because our adjustment layer is only at 30%. But I think that looks fine. So I'm just going to leave it like this. And there we go. That is pretty much done. The last thing that I like to add is another adjustment layer. So I'm just going to add one more adjustment layer and apply one more effect. But it is a plugin. It's called Heat Wave right here. And it's from the Red Giant Universe pack. So you will need that plugin. So if you don't have that, then you can't use this effect. But I think it just makes this effect look a lot more realistic. Now, I almost forgot but the last thing I'm going to add is another overlay and it is just like these fire embers here so I'm just going to scale this up and I'm just going to rotate it a bit and then let's just go over to the modes here and bring that to screen and that's way too strong I don't like how you can really see them there so I'm going to go to the opacity hitting T on the keyboard let's just bring that down to like 20% and there you go that is how you create this realistic fire effect instead of after effects I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys did make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys on the next video peace out